Welcome back to the show. The accumulation of wealth may bring many benefits, but it can also make you a target, something Jim Pattison knows only too well. Now, here's the final segment of my exclusive interview with the billionaire businessman, taped at his executive offices in Vancouver. Your daughter was tragically kidnapped and, and thankfully rescued um, 25 years ago or so. How has your family coped with that, that you know, tragedy? I mean, is it, has, have you healed from that, that scare? Yeah, we, we've, that was one. We've had a number of, of unhappy circumstances because of the world, the way the world works today, uh, like that. But uh, listen, you have to live and move on. You can't, you know, you can't change what happened two minutes ago. Yeah. And there's no sense of looking in a rearview mirror. Obviously, once you know, if a dog bites you going down one side of the street and you're delivering the mail, you'll probably go down the other side for a while, and you know, to try to get uh, avoid the same dog, you know, to get bit. So. Uh, I think that uh, we all learn to watch out, uh, but I think that uh, you can't live your life looking in a rearview mirror, other than hopefully I've learned from many of my mistakes, and certainly and I think we all are in that category where we make mistakes and look back and say, well, I wish I hadn't done that, and look at it, and sometimes you make the same mistake again. But you sure try hard not to. I know that you've publicly said that you don't intend to leave your wealth to your children. Um, what what's the reasoning for that? I don't think that giving a lot of money to children is necessarily uh, the best thing to do. I think it's important. Not and ever listen. Everybody's different. Every family's different. But I think that. It's important for children to learn values, to learn to work hard, make their own way in the world. That doesn't mean to say you won't help them, uh, but as far as leaving them vast amounts of money, uh, which today uh, I think it's important that there's a lot of other things that, that uh, it's important that they have a sense of accomplishment in their life, and uh, I think that uh, that after a certain level that uh, the, the money probably is better spent trying to help others well, I that, guess, that are less fortunate. Well, I, I, I guess the $64,000 question or the $6.4 billion question is then who, who will, will you leave your money to? But we don't talk about that. <laughs> you grew up with an entrepreneurial streak. I mean, I've read all the stories how you sold seeds and how you know, when, when the, you had newspapers with, uh, was it the pump bombing at Pearl Harbor and you bought up a whole bunch of papers and right. sold them as mementos. Yeah. Have, how, how, do you, how do you pass on that work ethic and that entrepreneurial spirit to your children? Well, I don't know whether you can pass it on. All you do is set an example. But everybody's different. I mean, you have, you have do you have children? I have four. Well. I doubt if they're all exactly the no, same not. if you got four kids. So all you do is, listen, all you do is try to teach your children the values you believe in, and after a certain point in time, they have to decide for themselves, including the fundamentals of hard work, integrity, ambition. You can't teach a kid ambition, and you can't teach them they can observe your ambition or your work, work ethic, but uh, everybody has to decide for themselves, including your kids. I've read that you give away one-tenth of your wealth in charity. Is that fair? Well, we don't talk about what we give away. Well, that, I guess that's my question, that, there, that for you, charity really is a per... I mean, there are wings and hospitals named after you. There are some pretty high-profile donations you've made, but in general, your, your charity is a very personal thing, isn't it? Well, we historically, we have 
any money we give away, we don't do it with a lot of noise. From time to time, uh, people ask us to sponsor certain things because it helps other people mm -hmm. give money to help a cause. So we will do that. But you, you don't. We're not, we are not in the business of giving money to give credit. We give money away to what we believe in. And I have always believed in tithing, if that's what you're talking about, mm -hmm. going back to how I was raised. And so we've always continued to do that. But why, why, I mean, there are a lot of people who, who I think for the, the, all the right reasons give money. Bill Gates, I think, is a good example, where you know, he's given away a lot of his wealth and he's done a lot of really good work. Um, I've interviewed Bill Gates and he's very public about what he's done, yeah. but he also wants his name attached to it. He wants to take credit. He's done the work, why not take the credit for it? You've, you've taken a different approach, and I'm curious why, why that is. Well, uh, everybody's different. We just prefer to, uh, other than certain places where they ask us to publicly give money because it will help their cause, mm. we prefer to do it uh, without a lot of noise. You're 80 uh, and you still come in here, you still run the shop. What drives you? Well, I like going to work. I haven't found anything I like better than going to work. So I go to work and I like what I do. I like what happens when I get here. You know, we travel a lot in our job and my job. And we have, uh, we got, we got a lot of mouths to feed, so we're busy. You have amazing name recognition, certainly in Canada, and I think. Well, <laughs> just uh, at home with my wife and dog at the minute. <laughs> what is the legacy you want to leave behind? What, what do you want people to remember in Paris? Or I haven't even thought about that. You clearly just think about the next day. Yeah, I'm, my job is doing what I do, do the best I can, and what happens, happens. Somebody else will have to figure all that out. Well, you say you're 80 years old. Are you going to retire at some point? I hope not, but uh, it hasn't crossed my mind up to now. Why? You know, I'm having a good time. I got no shareholders and that I have to report to every three months, so it works out from our point of view. And, and so far, the company's continuing to grow and prosper. And thank the Lord, my health has been good, so I'm grateful for that. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. You can find out more about Jim Patterson's businesses by visiting jimpatterson.com. Coming up next, he was tossed out of Zimbabwe because Robert Mugabe didn't like his reporting. Journalist Andrew Meldrum is here next. Declared what is this? A prohibited immigrant. I'm being deported now. I'm going directly to the airport. This is not the action of a government that is confident in its own legitimacy and it is afraid of a free press, and it is afraid of the independent and critical reporting.